him my mic is on mute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and oh, shit. Damn shit. Welcome back to Get With The Programming. I'm Chasing. I'm Captain America. And along with me is Bill Grundler. Wolverine. And I taught uh, Bill some um, cool tech things for the uh, podcast. Cause <laughs> so if the podcast gets shut off, I apologize in, in advance. Yeah. If we disappear or <laughs> the texts get out of control in the comment section, you guys can blame that on Bill because here in the Bubs Natural Studios is that uh, I would always send Bill a link. You know, you guys hear that if you ever watch like the Savan podcast. It's like, hey, send this guy a link so he can get on. And, you know, I can make Bill a co-host and he's kind of been one he just didn't know how to do it <laughs> I, did, I never saw the setup for that so yeah. i'm like all right it's all right so now you guys don't know who's talking to you in the comment section ever because it could be me it could be bill you might see right. comments come up and my hands like, are here like that one i did What's that one there? i didn't do shit i did that one that was <laughs> all me right there oh, old man bill just getting all technology space wall I, st- I taught my daughter Space Wolves yesterday. You did? <laughs> I go, so me and my buddy Chase, we say this word that came from our other friend, Wex, and we go, we go Space Wolves. Space Wolves. Space Wolves. She Space goes, Wolves. I don't get it. That's not funny at all. It's like, yeah, you had to listen to an entire 95 minute podcast <laughs> to really get it. And that was I only in like the sorry. last three minutes. <laughs> sorry, kids. Sorry. <laughs> oh, well, what's up, everyone? I'm, man, I'm so excited to get back to this. When yeah, was it? it's about time. Man. We needed it. We did one of these. Um, well, it was before the open, so that probably probably was like in January. Oh, I think it was before that. You think so? Eh, I don't know. Maybe. But uh, we'll be going through the CrossFit Journal. We have been working our way through the Glassman Chipper. <clears throat> if you guys haven't seen that, it was a collection of articles that Greg Glassman wrote in the early days of the CrossFit Journal, uh, curated by, is it Mike Workington? Yeah. And it's just a chipper, right? A long list of articles from the CrossFit Journal written by Greg Glassman. And we're just working our way through that, through the CrossFit Journal. And today we get to work through this bad boy down here which I'm excited about, and I think some people will be curious to see how this reads and, and, and really what it was. This is a big thing in the level one, level two, I think, more. This yeah. template was more talked about, and uh, it's cool because I'm a big template guy. Like, uh, as far as programming, it's like, you know, 6, 12, or whatever, number of weeks, there's a purpose to a cycle. So, like, templates and cycles – uh, I'm a big fan of. What about you? Um, I, I'm very general. Uh, I don't like. I don't like to box myself in too much. And since, okay, then that is totally true. That is your tell, by the way. Hundred <laughs> percent. I'll have at least three exclamation points, and then you'll know it's me. <laughs> Patrick says you can tell when Bill has the keyboard simply by the uses of exclamation points. <laughs> I've been told that many times. Um. So I think with my background in fire, um, I would be programming for my firefighters. And so because it wasn't a, uh, you know, there wasn't the CrossFit games or wasn't an open, there wasn't anything like that. There wasn't a start and finish to our stuff. Mm. Um, and, And so I just always was kind of in the mindset of training for life, not we'll train in three month segments and we'll train to get this and we'll see, and we'll have, you know, I had linear progressions kind of built in, but for the most part, I was never really thinking that way. Um, not against the idea of, but I, that was just something that I, uh, I just never really kind of came up with that Mm -hmm. through here. Although I understand them. I mean, I've done them when, you know, when I compete and I've had other coaches program for me. So like, I, I, I get them, I appreciate them. I get them. So. Well, what do you do now? Just, just um, now. I think I'm still a little bit less. Now, my my athletes, I will guide them to the the different um, events that we're trying to peak for. Okay, but again, it's it's more geared by that event rather than okay. Well, we have an eight mo- an eight week cycle or a twelve week cycle or mm-hmm. a, whatever that way. I just don't do it as much. Nice, nice. So when you like say, I mean, I'm sure you save all of it. Oh yeah, I got reams. Month, 
dates? How do you collect? Um, so when I'm designing, I have I have all my workouts on a um, like a spreadsheet basically, and I, like I have this one document that literally has, I think four hundred and thirty something months. Damn. Of workouts. Have you and backed it, that up? Friday. Oh yeah. <laughs> like oh yes, three I have three different external hard drives. <laughs> oh, <you're> right. Hundred <laughs> percent for sure. Um, and what I do generally is is there's a template that I do, and and you know me and you are different in the fact that like I have I usually do a two piece setup on my programming, so I have a strength piece and then a metcon. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, yeah. Um, I have a uh a or skeleton. like what do you do on Sundays? Like those just long. Oh, long. those are different. Like those don't those don't go into the program mm -hmm. as far as like well we need to make sure that we squat mm -hmm. and we we squatted this week so we. Those are just like, oh, man, okay, so what can't we really do in the classroom setting? And what's this going to like? I, I, I make them so that they usually will take around 40 to 50 minutes of stuff. Not like the uh, you look at the week and then like the old school regional final event. You're like, what haven't we done? Right. <laughs> Put no, it all it, in. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not that at all. I mean, usually, like, we don't do um, – just with the number of rowers and stuff like that, we can't row for a whole lot of distance yeah. in a workout, so we'll do something yeah. like that. Or um, I, I will have, you know, higher volume, you know, ring muscle-ups or bar muscle-ups, or we'll do some weird stuff where we're, um, you know, lunging for distance, uh, you know, for certain rounds, or we'll do like, you know, walking back squats or something like that that we can't normally do in a, in a, in a regular type setting. Uh, but usually like, as far as programming goes with the way I look is I have my week that I'm designing and on my spreadsheet, I can see what we've done for the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of go, all right, so where are we on our schedule for our strength stuff and kind of play with those. And where are we in those linear progressions of their squats and deadlifts or whatever? Uh, but then what am I doing? What have we done a lot of? Have we, have okay. we, like, are we doing pull-ups back to back to back to back to back? Um, are we squatting? If we are going to squat, are we squatting heavy one time? And then another one, it's going to be lighter thrusters and another one, it's going to be moderate, but like uh, kind of in the middle somewhere. So we can, I can look at that and, and try to make sure that we're doing it. Okay. And I, that way I feel like I'm getting I, my, 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 my thumb is on the pulse. Mm -hmm. um, plus I coach a lot of the classes. And so like, I can see how it's affecting everyone. So I can adjust as needed as we go. So it's a, it's a living, breathing document. Yeah. If you will. Cool. I, uh, shockers. Like I'm very templated and regimented in that department. Um, and, and more so for me, and, and this is part of the discussion before we even get into the article, is that, you know, this was a theoretical template for CrossFit's programming. That's the title of this journal article. I think we're on Glassman Chipper article number 15. Yeah. And what this is meant to be is a really beginning base foundation of really how to look at programming. And not like the only way to, which I think is cool. Well, and, and I think the title says it great, a theoretical yeah. template. It doesn't mean the 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 uh, the tablets that came down off the mountain. <laughs> yeah, the 12 commandments. It, it can only be this and that's it, you know? Yeah. And what we what we like to have this discussion is, is like, you know, Bill has his living, breathing document and I'll program in certain week templates focused on certain specific things. Yet we're still doing the same thing. Like, you know, you're guiding your people through the flow of getting to certain points in the year. And I'm doing the same thing just with like, okay, how far are we? Boom. Okay. I'll do something for eight weeks with this, a, a, a focus on this perhaps. Um, and, and it's, we're just talking that out and meaning is like there, we all get this question all the time is like, Hey, what's the best program out there? The answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> or like, the answer is no. <laughs> right. And it's like, I can tell you some bad ones. Right. But as far as a good one or, or it, it, it's like a one size fits all nutrition program. Like that's not a thing. Mm -hmm. there, if there was one way to do it, there would only be one way to do it. That goes with programming. That goes with nutrition. That goes with a, a lot of other things. And that's the cool part. And, and usually our answer is like, here's five resources to just like dive into. And this is one of them, right? The very basics. I mean, this talk about like a regimented Thing. Like this is about as, as regimented as you can get in a 
in a methodology that doesn't want to be regimented at all. When it's crazy, because how many times have you seen people come up to you? And we've had people do this with us and send us these things all the time where it's like, hey, I use the level one programming template and I designed all the workouts that set up like this. What do you think? Right. And it's kind of like, well, OK. But again, like you're, you're missing the, the point like that. This is so that you like what I think a lot of people miss on that is it's regimented so you don't get stuck doing the same thing. Right. It forces you to make sure you have your gymnastics in there and couple that up with, with some weightlifting and make sure you do just meta, meta, uh, metabolic conditioning in one day and make sure you have just a strength one. And then this one over here, have metabolic. I mean, it forces you to do that. It doesn't mean on Tuesday you must do. <laughs> Yeah. Or day three, five. It's, I mean, I love the way the article's written, honestly. Yeah. Um, because it, it gives, I think it is a, a very amazing starting point um, for a young programmer slash coach that wants to be able to, okay, how do I hit all the boxes? Because eventually, uh, and as we talk about how programming is such like an artistic, creative type of thing, mm -hmm. um, this is art 101. So you know mm. how to paint and know what the strokes are. And then right. you learn to like, go, oh, well, you know, I'm really good at acrylics. Mm. I'm really good with clay. And I, that's how I design my setup. doesn't look exactly like this, but I use a lot of the same stuff because of, of the foundation of it. So I think that's important. Yeah, I like that. That's, that's a great example. So when we, uh, when we dive in here, we'll just uh, go line by line as, as we work through this. So we'll start with the beginning. Yes. And this was an article written by... Greg Glassman, in February of 2003. And it says, the October issue of 2002, entitled What is Fitness, explores the aims and objectives of our program. And then when you work down here, is that the workout of the day from our website, what is likely less clear is the rationale behind the workout of the day, or specifically what motivates the specifics of CrossFit's programming. And throughout this article, he says our issue is to offer a model or template for our workout programming in the hope of elaborating on the CrossFit concept and potentially stimulating productive thought on the subject of exercise prescription generally and workout construction specifically. Say that three times fast. Yeah. <laughs> and what it is, is exactly that, right? Provide a baseline template and foundation of thought through the process of something very basic and simple is what this will work through in hopes to stimulate other thought processes and other ways, but all centered around the same thing, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so it, the question is what, <laughs> what we want to do is bridge the gap between an understanding of our philosophy of fitness and the workouts themselves. That is how we get from theory to practice, which is funny because like that's a level one. We have a theory lecture, and then we have a movement lecture, and then that movement lecture usually goes into a breakout group. But we're using the same template of a level one seminar, just in this way of providing a theory in hopes that you can take that into practice. Man, and when you watch that in the level one, when they're, when they're doing that, I mean, like everyone, you know, they, they teach how to do the squat, how to do the deadlift, they talk about all of these different types of movements. And then you get to this one, and it's like all of a sudden everyone goes like, okay, the answers are going to come out right now. Yes. This like is, these this secret, is why I these secret answers. <laughs> and it, and it's, it's weird because I, it, people get very, um, they want it to be right or wrong. And, and it's not that it just, I, I even, even we even read when I went back and I read this, there was a lot of things were popping up in my head that was like, okay, I can tell right now, like there'll be words in here where it'd be like, you know, it's gotta be, you know, randomness. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, everyone's like, ah, random. And it's like, oh, I, that's, it shouldn't do it that way because it can't be. And it's like, ah, okay, think about what it was at 2002. Yeah. Nobody was doing it this way. Right. And that, that's what you have to kind of keep. You got to keep, you got to keep looking through those glasses. Oh, Paulina just hurt me. <laughs> I was just born when this article came. Out. Wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Aren't you a little young listening to this show? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think there's an age restriction on Savant's show, not here. 
<laughs> Seriously. All right. So as we work our way through the rest of the article here, it says, is first glance, the template seems to be offering a routine or regimen. This is what we talked about at the top of the show. This may seem at odds with our contention that workouts need considerable variance or unpredictability, if not randomness, which we don't use the random word, we use variance, to best mimic the often unforeseeable challenges that combat, sport, and survival demand and reward. And so when we talk variance in programming, it's just because of that. We're trying to mimic the life, right? Life right. throws random things at you. If you want to say varied things at you, you can as well. But like, it's to the, that unknown and unknowable, it's to prepare for that. It's not like, just do the unknown and unknowable at all time, but it's like, how many different combinations of things can we mix in and different modalities, movement patterns, time domains, weights, things like that, to offset the randomness that life throws at us at times. And especially like if you think, I mean, go back to your roots as a firefighter, Bill. It's like, it's not like, you don't just like run hoses every day, or right. stairs every day. It's like, what if this like support wall falls on three of your guys? It's like, can, you know, that was like, oh shit, I've been just doing cardio. Right. And that was the thing. You could never prepare for the, the incidents the things that could happen in an incident. You don't know what you need to be you know, good at or ready for for that. It wasn't a, I'm doing an Olympic triathlon and I know exactly how far I have to swim and how far I have to bike and how far I have to run and how, you know, how fast my transition. You're going to get there and everything's going haywire and it's like, okay, well, now I need my sh machine and hopefully it's been, been prepared somehow to be able to do whatever it needs to do. So you're right. The it's it's not about throwing random things for the sake of throwing random things because like you said randomness doesn't happen in life all the time but you want you want to be able to have enough fitness well-rounded fitness to adapt to whatever's going to come your way jason that's a hell of a compliment just so we're all aware of what this really is this is sunday school for crossfit <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah uh question from dana have they ever had a single arm barbell snatch at the games or regionals? I just no. And I, hope I just, they never do. I just <laughs> told my brother no. He's like, give me good talk, man. Good talk. I'm like, I'm on the air right now. He's like, well, then I'll ask Chase online. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, they haven't done one. <laughs> so Jim and Dana, sorry. No, no single arm snatch. Oh, is that your brother? Yeah. Is he hiding behind his? <laughs> no, that, that's, that's soon to be the Mrs. Mm. Dana right there. Yes. Hi. Yes. <laughs> uh, fun fact about the single arm snatch in, in, uh, to that question is if anyone's ever used and they don't really have these anymore, but early day CrossFits, these are some of the only barbells you could find are bars that had the knurling mm -hmm. knurling in the middle of the barbell. And they're like, what purpose in the world does this serve when I'm doing cleans? And it would just like grate your Adam's apple through your collarbone. And the reason is, is back in the day, the one arm snatch was a lift in basically like weightlifting competitions. So they put knurling in the middle of the bar specifically for that lift. And that's really its only purpose. That's my favorite one because that way I don't have to wear a shirt when I'm cleaning. Mm. Cause you know, I have to have a shirt. So the bar doesn't just slip it, down your chest. I just let the, I just let the knurl and just, <laughs> just sandpaper the shit out of my collarbones. <laughs> you mean, you mean I'm nice and smooth like, right here. Dibs on the rough one. Like, All yours, bro. Like, I, I, I ain't fighting you on that barbell. <laughs> uh, okay. So as we get uh, through, uh, through here is um, I like this line here is what our regimen needs is not to become routine. And that's a, a, a line we say a lot, right? And so that we may have a template, right? We don't want to have like a specific routine. So for example, like what you said is like every day we do a weightlifting gymnastics combo, it's going to be back squats with uh, push-ups, right? Mm -hmm. But the model, right? Since there's so many different ways to combine these three pathways or, or modalities that we talk about, allows for a wide variance of mode, exercise, metabolic pathway, rest, intensity, sets, and reps. In fact, it is mathematically likely that each three-day cycle is a, singular in, is a singular, singularly unique stimulus never to be repeated in the lifetime of CrossFit workouts. I mean, think of, you, you talked about all the pages of programming that you had. Yeah. And 
how often have you accidentally created the same workout twice? Um, well, I've definitely done that. Like similar. Yeah. No, I mean, I've, I've definitely done that in my mind. I'm thinking a certain, I've had a, it, it doesn't, it, we will do ones that we have done in the past or like are, are similar. There've been a couple of times where I'm just kind of, I'm in the mode designing mm -hmm. and someone will go, we just did that one. I'm like, oh, we didn't do, we didn't <laughs> just do that one, but it will basically be the same type of thing. And I'm like, God dang it. Mm -hmm. I was so in the zone and like, it just fits so nice. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, uh, uh, a trippy thing to do to people. And this is what's so weird when they want to, when they go the other way where it's like, all we do is something different every day. If you make them do the same thing twice, Mm -hmm. Put it up the next day and have them do the same workout. And they're like, what is this? We just did this. And then you could throw out the whole, well, you know, you got to be ready for the unknown. And unknowable. <laughs> uh, yeah. You didn't realize that you would have to do the exact same thing over again. Did you? Um, not that I've done that on purpose, yeah. but um, I mean, it is to mess with one of those is like, yes, part of our, our variance is actually doing the same thing back to back days. Yeah. Do it again. One day, this is one of my goals now is to figure out who Trish really is. <laughs> trish knows way too much about crossfit to be who this display person is so <laughs> i mean it's like i know <laughs> She's got all of them. <laughs> I guarantee you, I know who Trish is, and Trish knows who I am, like on a personal level. Like, I just, they know too much. <laughs> I'm going to figure this out. Figure this out. All right, we'll scroll back to the top of page one. Uh, this template is engineered to allow for a wide and constantly varied stimulus, randomized within some parameters, but still true to the aims and purposes of CrossFit, as described in the What is Fitness issue? And the one is fitness issue, which is this is a, a build off of, was the really the, the, the beginning part of how we analyzed the programming, right? We looked at that issue, we looked at the templates, we looked at the models, and we used that to assess programming. And you can do that in games form, sport form, or you can do that in regular class form. There are certain stimulus and modalities that you always try to hit. A, and I would say almost even more so in your affiliate than necessarily in competition. I actually asked this question to Boz um, about a stimulus he was trying to achieve in a certain test. He goes, I'm not thinking stimulus as much as outcome because they're racing, right? I want there to be a race. I want there to be a, a test here. Stimulus is varied between the people taking the test. So I think that pertains more to like group class training. And I thought that was an interesting um, take by. I, 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 I would agree with that, honestly. Like if you, that, which is really weird because we, we saw movements in the quarterfinals that to me were testing modalities rather than racing modalities. Mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting that like he says that, you know, and, and made that comment, which is a, which is a great comment. I, I think that's right. You don't, you, you're not racing stimulus. You're racing right. to see who can lift the fast, who can lift the heaviest, the fastest, go the furthest, mm -hmm. whatever the thing is that you're trying to, trying to do. It's the race, not the stimulus. The stimulus is for training that training modality is so that you have the ability in the race. Yeah. So that's interesting. And it was, it was, a, it was a question about the team test. <clears throat> And it was uh, 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 test two with the rope climbs, the, the row, shoulder overhead. And, oh, yeah. Hey, what was the stimulus you were trying to chase here? And he goes, I'm not looking at stimulus at all. I wanted to race rope climbs. I'm looking at how they win this event through this. I was like, shit. It was such a simple line, but I was like, yeah. damn. Okay. No, that, that's... that's Cause I do believe sometimes I will judge competition programming on the breadth of the stimulus between event to event, right? I mean, you can look, it's like, hey, all these were sub five. So we are looking at time domain and stimulus a little bit. But well, I, mean, I say, I don't, I don't think we're looking at stimulus when, when, when we are looking at that. We're looking at, do we have a complete test that encompasses 
our definition of fitness, which is the 10 physical traits mm-hmm. and hitting all of those types of things. Are we going short, medium, and long? Are we going light, moderate, and heavy? Are we doing specific things here and specific things there? Are we hitting you know these in, in couplets and triplets and then whatever? Um, I, I think that whether you get the quote-unquote stimulus right. or not, he's right. It isn't the point. It's that it's missing a a, a component of the fitness definition that you're trying to look at as you're either advancing people through or whatever the purpose of that particular competition is. Are you just putting on a show for everyone or whatever? See, Trish knows too much, man. You're a fucking red shirt. I know you are. (laughs) You are. You are. No one else would say that. I mean, and that's exactly what we're talking about. Testing. Exactly what it is. hundred percent. CrossFit sport versus CrossFit, the training methodology. Uh, Okay. It says our template contains sufficient structure to formalize or define our programming objectives while not setting in stone parameters that must be left to variance if the workouts are going to meet our needs. That's our mission. Ideally, a blend of structure and flexibility. Right. So as you said, the, the 10 commandments, the tablets, right? It's not written in stone. This is a basic template. Uh, It says, it's not our intention to suggest that your workouts should or that our workouts do fit neatly and cleanly within the template, for that is absolutely not the case. But the template does offer sufficient structure to aid in comprehension, reflect the bulk of our programming concerns, and not hamstring the need to radically varying stimuluses. And I like that one too, the radically varying, like, Oh, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to do this like crazy ass <laughs> movement to show you how unique and varied my programming is. And that's, that, that's the more keep it simple. Yeah. What well, doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be uh, random or varied. Doesn't mean mega uber unique. So random that you'd never do it type of thing. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this. Do you remember this? Do you remember virtual shoveling? (laughs) I hurt my back doing that. (laughs) (laughs) I will say that in my time, if those of you guys that don't know what that is, that's back in the old, uh, you can go back in the old journal on that one, but it's called virtual shoveling. The idea was you got to be ready for everything, sport, work, life. You dig in a ditch. So what do you do? You take a 45 pound bar with a third with the 45 pound on one end and you have to go up and oh, over the box, box. And, touch, and then come back again. And you do I that. Hurt my back doing that. <laughs> like, okay, we're going to take this extended weight outside of your basically frontal plane and center of mass. And then we're going to lift and twist. <laughs> <laughs> And from like my right shoulder to my left hip, my back is like, nope. <laughs> I, I will say in my young days, we actually had, I think there was probably two. I don't think we had any more than that. Two workouts where we actually did that. It was more kind of a, a silly movement to, to yeah. again, to do something different. But it's just like at the games where they had to do. Um, well, but uh, uh, draw your dagger to put up there. Exactly. I was just thinking about that. Yeah, but I now. had a sledgehammer. Like we had sledgehammers and we hit tires. That was what we oh, did back wheel, then. Wheelbarrows. Moving wheelbarrows. Yes, great. You know, the, D- digging we're not ditches. Virtual wheelbarrows right now. We're saying virtual, virtual <laughs> shovel. <laughs> like, uh, what I love about that is uh, as corny as that is, what I love about it is. All that is the beginnings of this kind of stuff where it's like, okay, is that valid to even put in? It's like, ah, okay, cool. No, maybe we shouldn't have done that one. (laughs) Well, um, and that's one thing I'll I'll, I'll touch on. I I don't know if we were talking about this on a podcast earlier or just like chatting is that, you know, a lot of with uh, some of the things that Boz is putting into the competition side, sports side, it does open the door for people to try new things in the gym. It's like, hey, face the wall the other way. I mean, that was part of the original, like, gymnastics seminar to get a handstand push-up. Like, they said you should be able to do one facing a wall before you ever get the, get the um, honor to put your back to the wall. Like, you had to earn that right. Same thing with kipping pull-ups and strict pull-ups and ring muscle-ups and things like that. And so when I look at, you know, if I just take a step back and I look at wall-facing handstand push-ups, V-ups, crossovers, um, is I, th- I hope that the, 
this brings more experimentation back into the affiliate. Into the lab. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. I Not wanna... into the race, but yeah. into yeah. the lab. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and that's 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 where I'm I'm working through uh, some of this thing is like I think people got to a point where they are programming based off maybe what is the most visible in the CrossFit space, which is the CrossFit game season, mm -hmm. which is off season competition. So they see all these ring muscle ups and that's, and boss says things like rings weren't only made for ring muscle ups. Jump rope isn't only made for double unders. The wall isn't just for a handstand push up or the kettlebell for a kettlebell swing. And what I hope to see be okay with experimenting more, like you said, in the lab, right? What we used to do, tire flips, sledgehammer slams, Turkish get-ups, we used to do wall walks, like those were all the things that we used to do because we weren't overly concerned with matching what we do in the gym with what we do maybe in competition in sport, which is for a very small population of, of people. And I, and I hope the positive thing comes out is people will feel more freedom to experiment in the lab again, which I think a lot of affiliates maybe don't do anymore because they only do what they think they see or have or have um, exposure with. Well, and I, I think with all of the templates that are out there, um, programming is going to kind of become, if we're not careful as affiliate owners and programmers and coaches, is it's going to become a like a lost art mm. um, because we're just going to be relying on HWPO or the CrossFit's programming or, you know, whether you're doing Mayhems or you're doing Invictus or whatever, you start relying on them and then you, you don't have that freedom to try something new because your, your, your hands aren't dirty. You got to get them in the mud. Like you have to start mixing that stuff around to be able to play. Yeah. And, and, and that's one of the, that's one of the fun things about it. It's playing on rep schemes and weights and looking for certain stimulus. And it's also playing like, okay, is this a valid move? We saw them do it here. I wonder how that plays in the gym. I mean, yeah. I've done, I've done ring handstand pushups in the gym. When we first saw it in 20, was that 2010 or 2011? And, I know and everybody went back to the affiliate and started doing those things. Well, and what else did we see? We also saw it on .com a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. So there was like four times, I think, that particular year when they have. So it's like, oh, all right, well, maybe yeah. maybe kind of play with it. Well, I mean, what, we'll see what happens. If nothing else, it gives you an idea. And then as like a coach myself, it's like, okay, well, then how do I scale that, modify that? What's the purpose of that? Yeah. What am I trying to get with that? Is it just just because it's hard? No, that's not an answer. Well, what are you yes. trying to achieve with it, you know? And to your general populace is like, how do you how do you explain that to them? Because I think, right. for example, I think a Turkish get up is a hell of a training move. Yes. A hell of a training move. And not really something I would put in something for time. But it's like, hey, we're gonna do a hundred of these, right? And then after every 10 or two rounds or whatever. And people won't do them. They're like, oh, I don't want to do that. It's not it's one, it's hard. Yeah. It's not fast. It's not flashy. And I was like, dude, if you have a good Turkish get up, like that's a cool thing to watch someone be good at. Well, especially if you can do it with some weight, like it's hard yeah. when you're doing Turkish get ups and it's really light. So you can bypass all the reasons for the mm -hmm. ways that you have to move to get it done to, right. You know, look at all the different range of shoulder mobility that you need to have and et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Trish says every affiliate owner should have to write a bad workout at least once. Dude, I don't I don't think you have to try. <laughs> that yeah. shit just happens. <laughs> and that's what you, you want though. Like if you're not making mistakes, you're not trying. That's like saying that like, it's... look at any laboratory. We're talking scientific laboratory. <laughs> right. Like that's all they are it's is mistakes. Edison out there and just like doing it wrong 10,000 times until right. you only get the light bulb to work. And, and that's what it should be. And I, I want people to have the freedom and safety to fail in that air arena just as they would in like a workout, like if they're just an athlete. Yeah. Um, but okay. So we'll continue on here. Uh, template macro view, right? In the broadest view, we see a three day on one day off pattern all the way back in 2003. And it has not changed. <laughs> thankfully. Right. Three on one off. We found that this allows for a relatively higher volume of higher intensity work 
than many others that we've experimented with. And I like that. I like the yes. fact that in there, this is what, uh, the result from what they've seen by trying other things. So it isn't just like, because we said so. Take my word for it. Yeah. They, they said a bunch of stuff. Experiment. And that's what you want to see is, like we, we call it the lab for a reason, is to be able to see, try different things, right? Uh, I want to pull this one up. Do you think we'll see ring to support oh, at the games? I hope not. <laughs> Maybe. I want to be surprised. Uh, Jeffrey Birchfield, Bulgarian split squats. Yes, yes, great. Right? Interesting. Mix it up. Mix it up. Um, with this format, the athlete can work at near work at or near the highest intensities possible for three straight days, but by the fourth day, both neuromuscular function, and that's more like CNS, when people say their CNS is smoked, and anatomy are hammered to the point that where continued work becomes noticeably less effective, right? And so this three-on-one-off format really came in a way of trying to keep intensity high every day you train until it got to a certain point of diminishing return and then you take a rest day. A rest day. Part of your adaptation is you need to take a rest day. Right? Like your body needs to heal. Like weightlifting. That's a half marathon, right? It's a half marathon row yeah, on the rest day. Half marathon row with Maybe my triathlon. Or, oh, you know, a 10K walk in a vest. I'm like, go take swim a three miles. Rest day. <laughs> if you guys want to increase your ability to train, you have to take rest days. Like lifting weights and Training CrossFit like tears your muscle tissues apart. If you rest, the muscle tissues will heal and harden, and that's how you get stronger. <laughs> yep. If you continue to tear and 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 tear, your body will just go to shit. So all these people like, I've been taking a rest day in a year. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my new training cycle of turning 40 might be two on one off. <laughs> just uh yeah. I, dude I, I will say and i'm sure that um annie would agree with me on this and sakamoto is that if you do have two days off in a row you're gonna be just fine in fact you'll probably be more recovered and be able to hit the workout much harder and as you get older that's something that like masters really need to think about is you don't pr by putting more time in yeah you need to ensure that the workouts that you have are at the um, highest ability you're able to give and make sure you have enough recovery so that you can do that again. That is where you're going to win as a master Th or as you get older. The perfect comment to pull up right before we get here. It says the chief drawback of a three day on one day off. As we move past this, we'll get back up to there. Regimen is that it does not sync yep. with the five day on two day off pattern that seems to govern most world's work habits. Right. The regiment is odd of a set at odds of the seven day week. This is others have found that scheduling needs, family work and school require scheduling workouts on specific days of the week, every week. So for these people, a five day on two day off regimen may work better versus a three on one off. Like it says right here, it's like, there's not a perfect system, but this is the best one that they have found to work within the experiments that they've given. It's not going to work for everybody. But neither will five day on two. Like there's no perfect system. Life is going to get in the way. Things are going to happen. What we want to do is, is make sure when things are working well, we're maximizing those opportunities. Yeah. Another, another nice one that like I'll have a lot of my athletes do is three on, one off, two on, one off. That's what I, I typically did at the uh, affiliate as well. Three on, yeah. one off, two on, one off. I mean, and it, it works for most people's times. That way they're getting two rest days in there. It splits mm -hmm. up their day. Um, it allows them time on the weekend to do what they need to do. It allows them that, that break in the middle of the week. Um, and you're still trying to hold true to the intensity. And the other thing is, it's like, you just, it's too easy, especially when you're getting older to grind yourself down. You have a lot of things that you're, that you're dealing with at one time. You have kids, you have work, you have relationships, you have money, you have all this and you're trying to train and you have competitions that you're trying to, to do. So the idea is to maximize as much of that as you can 
um, and be able with the ability to hit the workouts as, as, as good as you can. Yep. Uh, and it says down here is the workout of the day that it was originally five on two off, but the three on one off pattern was devised to, we'll hit this again, increase both the intensity and the recovery of the workouts to increase the intensity and recovery of the workout. Intensity is it. It's the, it's the secret sauce to everything. You want to get, yeah, Trish nailed it. You want to be <laughs> faster. You got to use intensity to get there. You want to be stronger. You got to be intensity to get there. You want to lose weight. You got to use intensity to get there. You want to be better, you know, build a better engine. Intensity is it. Right? Intensity is it. That's all it is. You have to be chasing this. So if your programming or your schedule does not align with that, if you cannot keep the intensity, then you need to figure out a different way or a different program or a different schedule that allows you to do that. It's it. It's that's it all comes down to that. And the best part of that is as we say all the time, he's like, oh, so it means I drive my face into the ground every day. That doesn't sound very healthy or good for my body. No, it's all relative. And it's all relative to the test that you're taking at the time. Like Bill's intensity for an hour long Sunday fun fest is a lot different than the two minute slug fest that's going to come on Tuesday. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. He's not going to attack the one hour fun day with the two minute intensity. <laughs> the intensity is going to match the stimulus and that's where we talk stimulus the stimulus you're going to maximize that with the relative intensity that the workout is designed to be and intensity can be lost when you do too many days back to back to back it's not worth it it's like oh, i trained every day for 30 days it was so intense i was like no it wasn't <laughs> yeah totally it's hard and, and because it's hard and, and again Hard doesn't mean that you are training with intensity because you're grinding through it like 75% all the way through that entire week does not mean that you worked and, 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 and had your highest level of intensity or that you got the most out of it. All it meant was you just ground away at 75%. Right. We don't win at 75%. It's like doing six workouts in a day. Oh, it's yeah. six workouts today. I'm like, so cool. Cool. And look at my bloody hands. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm so tired. <laughs> it's like I did one and I can not, you know, it's like, and I can't move and function. It's like, you know, I probably got a little bit more. Hey, would you, would you count yoga as a uh, active rest day? No. <laughs> Sorry, Laura. <laughs> of course, I, I, I will say this. the problem is I'm doing yoga like I'm doing Fran. Ah, uh, okay. And the amount of times that the the instructor will come by and is like, you know, if you feel like it's a little too intense, you're more than welcome to go down the child's pose for anybody else that is actually struggling to get this position. I'm like, you can just say me, bitch. Like, I'm, <laughs> like yeah, I get it. I'm there over here. Are. I'm over here vibrating, trying to hit triangle pose right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is not relaxing for me. <laughs> I, I think I think that there is a way to make it be if you're if you're no, using I, it as I like stretching. Yoga, and I totally you. agree. Yes, I I honestly is like having a pure rest day or a light yoga day. Like that's I would say one that's more maybe like stretch yoga. I know that's not like a thing, like a hot yoga stretch because some of those are like hardcore. Yeah, like, stay the fuck away from Pilates on your rest day. That shit is so hard. <laughs> you know, but if like, if, if taking a, a day at yoga is, is going to center you in your life, it's going to give you more flexibility. It's, and it's a way to like, yeah, it's an active recovery day. If you, if you approach it like that, not right. like I do it, right? My yoga days are not in active recovery, right? Well, or that's, yeah, that's a, it's a, it's a mindset thing for that. I think I've, in a lot of things, I mean, I tell people if like they're injured and they're coming in to work out, all right, today, I just, you're just moving today. Yeah. And yeah. They come yeah. up and they're like, you hear them in the side, over on the side, rah, rah. <laughs> like, dude, you're not doing what I told you to do. <laughs> Laura, I breathe through yoga about as much as you breathe through childbirth. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my breathing looks like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this one part at the bottom, it says, life is easier with a five-day on route. If life is easier with five on, two off, don't hesitate to employ it. The difference in potential between the two may not warrant restructuring your entire life to accommodate it. And so what we're saying is that there's just a lot of flexibility in this, right? 
Uh, elements by modality. All right, so there's a, a template above here, but looking at the template in a macro view in table one, and we'll go through this, is you'll hear us say this a lot, right? Monostructural, which is monostructural metabolic conditioning, which is labeled as cardio, gymnastics, body weight exercise, and then weightlifting, powerlifting, and Olympic lifts. And what those look like is a monostructural movement is anything cyclical that you can repeat for a long period of time. Running, rowing, swimming, double unders are, are filed in there. To a certain extent, depending on your conditioning level, burpees could be put in there. A, I'm surprised a bit. that wasn't put in there, honestly. Well, I think because back in the day, burpees were like really difficult. I mean, they're still not easy, but yeah. burpee is a cyclical movement that you can keep doing. And that's, I think, why everybody hates a burpee because it just makes them like really feel exposed. Like, it, yeah, it's personal. I can't do it. I'm like, you, yeah, you can have to lay down. Just, <laughs> yeah, fall, <laughs> lay on the ground, get back on your feet. One, like, you can keep doing them. You just don't want to. Especially just the classic burpee, not even like a burpee box jump. That's, you know, that's different. Uh, gymnastics, we say your ability to move your body in space. So anything unweighted. So pull-ups, push-ups, box jumps, GHD sit-ups, muscle-ups, handstand walks, handstand push-ups, wall walks, all that is considered gymnastics. And weightlifting is anything with an external load. So dumbbell, kettlebell, sandbag. I mean, sled pushes. I, yeah. I remember we always used to go back and forth with that. It's like, yeah, that's a, that's a weightlifting movement. Like yeah. you're moving an external load with your body. Um, so, so things of that nature. So when you guys see these things, and those are categories as M for monostructural, G for gymnastics, W for weightlifting. And what the template is showing here is super, super basic, right? So if you guys are watching on YouTube, day one, so they, they're using a three-on-one-off format. They're bit, they, just taking these in order, right? You've got MGW. So day one, it's a single modality M. And day two, you pick up where you didn't have the first day and you're going to take the G and the W. And then day three, you're putting all three in. And then you have a rest day. And then you come back. And the next letter up, if you're just like cycling through, is a single modality gymnastics day. Then you have a weightlifting monostructural day. And then you have all three again. And then you switch back. And you're just, it's like, you're, it's like a building block. You're just... Stacking and moving and stacking and moving and stacking and moving. And the one thing you don't get in this format is like a double or triple of the same modality. Mm -hmm. right? And so you can always mix and match those. And that's another way to do it. It's like, all right, we have a, and it's just showing you, it's like how you can easily tick this through. It's like, oh, well, that seems very structured over and over. It's like, yeah, but your library of movements are nearly endless. And combinations are surely endless, even though it's a single modality couplet and a triplet, um, just as a basic template for people well, to go through. Yeah, and again, the, the, the whole purpose of the template is so that you are not allowing yourself to do the same thing over and over. We are creatures of habit, and we're going to hop into the things that we like to do. And we will design certain things a certain way just because we automatically will start to block out things that we don't want to do or don't like to do. And so it's very easy for that kind of stuff to happen. So what this does is it just keeps someone that isn't a well-experienced programmer on track with something. It, it gives them some bumpers to work within. It, you know, like we said, it, it's not a hard, fast rule. It's, it's a, it's a design. So then in case you kind of start losing track of where you are, of what you've done or what you need to do, yeah. then you can go there. Uh, Jeffrey asks, well, like, what if, what would this look like with a three on one off, two on one off? Well, you just take that <clears throat> one off in the back and just split it. Right. Yeah. So say day one is monostructural. Day two is gymnastics, weightlifting. And then day three is monostructural gymnastics, weightlifting. You have your rest day and then day two, Right, and then you have gymnastics day five, weight thing to monostructural day six, rest day day seven, and you just slide that little guy over. Like the yeah, format yeah. doesn't change, like the rest days are all in there. Right, you just splot, you basically just rewrite this pattern of shifting movements in singles, couplets, and triplets, and you just put your rest days in the three on one off, two on format. That's all you got to do. You could do it with two on one off, you could do it one on two off, like that's that's. It's just that that system continues on in this basic template forever. Just intersplice your rest days as needed. That's that's one way to 
to yeah. poke through it. So yeah. um, off that template, it says, uh, as we work our way down here, just as types of exercises now, it, this is, again, 2003. Examples of, which we went through already. <clears throat> um, yeah, hold on, real fast, real fast. Go up to the gymnastics, about halfway down. Press the handstand. Son of a bitch. Look at that. Gymnastics, air squat, pull up, push up, dip, handstand, push up, rope climb, muscle up, press to handstand, back extension, sit up, jumps, and lunges. Now, I want to highlight this little guy, jumps. Have you been watching any of the run the test things on the games YouTube? Yeah. So it's like a little behind the scenes of event, the sandbag ladder, and it's just like a seven or ten minute interview with Boz yeah. about it. The one of the more recent ones he did was the up and over. So it was the the event right after the Capitol. Okay. Okay. Um, and it had like the jumping over the logs or the jumping over the pig or the jumping on top of the high box. He put in, he talked about this and he's like, jumping doesn't always have to be onto a box. He's like, there's actually a lot of things you can use jumping for when it comes to programming. Yeah, And so when I see this here <laughs> in this article, it just says jumps. It doesn't say box jumps. It just says jumps. It aligns exactly with, uh, <laughs> with what he was talking about there. And then like it, it kind of put it in my head. I was like, man, what other things could we use like in jumping? Do you remember, uh, was it CrossFit's COVID open where we had the four-foot broad jumps? Or is that in the um, other thing, um, the movement? Remember that? That way it was in, I think it was in the COVID one. I don't think it was in the run, lift, move. No, not the run, lift, move. The, uh, it, but it was from CrossFit. Yeah. I, I meant the, like the eye movement. I think that uh, Loud and Live did. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're right. Um, dude, I put, I put broad jumps in regularly uh ah, regularly fairly regular way more than i think most would trish potty mouth See? <laughs> i know you did i know who you are i'll figure it out <laughs> um, <laughs> but i actually like when they did that that four foot one i i to me that was like if i do them i do it like eight feet and seven feet oh really like i yeah like i'll, I'll take kind of like the length of your barbell because what I don't want is I want someone to get like uh like where they have to go for it on that jump, mm -hmm. not to where they can just bump 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 bump. Um, and I will tell you that your the the front of your shins, if you do any Ooh. number of those, will yeah. never be sore. <laughs> You'll walk and your foot will want to just like drag in the front. Yeah, like you just can't like pick your foot up anymore. Yeah, it's a great move. It's a great move. So, uh, what about this squat jumps? Yeah, target, dude. That that shit hurts. Yes, full squat depth to a a target. Like pick it, pick whatever you want. A foot overhead, or two feet overhead, whatever. Yeah, it hurts. I think that's why med ball cleans done appropriately suck because you kind of do this hop squat with a med. Yeah. yeah, not like the pull the med ball off the ground into the bottom of the squat like you see people do with wall ball shots to start. But yeah, jump squats. I mean, you can standardize like a burpee broad jump. They've got to put some lines on the floor. It's like look, five foot sections. You got to do a burpee broad jump into the next section. It has to be one movement. So like you can't burpee stand to the line and just like hop over it. Yeah. It's like right when your feet hit the ground, you got to jump over it. So I think, and it's coming. Broad, they're going to standardize broad. What do, you, do you think, what do you think is, is uh, more likely? Jump squats or broad jumps programmed in competition? First, maybe. I, I can see both happening. Um, I think... Ooh, I, I got one more for you. Sorry. I think broad jumps. One more for you. Yeah. Something that's a high target to jump to. What do I think the height would be? No, no, no. So, okay, so you have jump squats, right? It's like, hey, jump squat hit a six-inch target above your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or broad jumps for a certain distance. Or here's a line that's nine feet in the air, and you have to jump and touch that line just from a, a standing position. I, li I like that. I would do those with, like, full-depth squats to that line. Ooh, okay. Squat jumps to a target. You're combining them. Yeah. 
Hmm. So it's like, hey, you guys are worried about the wall ball weight? All right. Don't have any weight. Just no wall jump ball. up yeah. really high. <laughs> you think that's easy? Dude, I'm the your legs will will have a pump like no other. Yep. And then here, for all you whiny bitches out there, you can have a nine foot and eight foot line. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No weight. I'm reasonable. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I saw jumps and I, I watched that. I mean, look at weightlifting, deadlift, cleans, presses, snatch, clean and jerk, medicine ball drills, kettlebell swing. Yeah. So warning, you've been warned. You've been warned. Get ready. Uh, what does this have at the end that I pulled off? This is gymnastics modality. Oh, okay. Let me look at this really quick. Tablet and macro view, gymnastics, let's see, my, uh, metabolic conditioning, gymnastics, weightlifting. The metabolic conditioning is a monostructural activity is commonly referred to as cardio. The purpose is to primarily improve the cardiorespiratory capacity and stamina. The gymnastics modality comprises body weight exercises slash elements or calisthenics. And its primary purpose to improve body control by improving neurological components. This is one I wanted to hit. Like coordination, balance, agility, and accuracy. So if you think about those 10 general physical skills, we have movements that elicit a bigger adaptation in certain segments of those 10 general physical skills. And if you look at those four specifically, when we break them down, you have neurological and then you have, um, is it uh, physical? Yeah. Right. And so the bottom four in that list are the neurological components, which require practice. Right? And so that's, that was part of our, our hubbub about the VIA. It's like, this is a great training element for these four things, but when you put it into a test setting, that's where it gets a little murky and, and it agree. doesn't elicit the same effectiveness as the purpose of the movement itself. And that's that training testing discussion that we had at the top, right? And so it's like, oh, I wanted to hit the bottom four you know, neurological pathways as far as like um, 10 general physical skills. I'm like, yeah, you could have done that with something different. Right, but that was uh, I wanted to touch on, and then the weightlifting modality comprises of the most important weight training basics, Olympic lifts, and powerlifting, where the aim is to primarily to increase strength, power, and hip and leg capacity. So that's what I wanted to touch on a little bit there. And it's just cool, is like showing where some of these movements and modalities fit on that scale. Let's see. Uh, medical and conditionings, run bike, elements of the test, workout structure. Um, okay, so the workout structure went through that. Again, I think this part is cool way back then. Yeah. It's, this, is a, this is where we see a lot of people trying to come up with an app or come up with some sort of a, a, a calendar that has all of these things set up and, and trying to monetize seen people try to monetize well i have it all set up it's, this is a crossfit layout right here mm -hmm. it's exactly set up exactly as this you know and it's like uh, yeah. you're, you're missing the point even if you were to go to dot com it's not necessarily exactly like this regimented plan right you know i mean the elements are there the the variation is there um, the all encompassing of hitting all the different things are there. Having your, your single modality, having your couplets and your triplets in there are all there, but it doesn't mean that like, again, that this is the only road to go. It's, it's your template. Yeah. Not the law. It's a template. I, I like this part up here. When the workout includes a single exercise, like days one, five and nine, the focus on a single exercise or uh, the focus is on a single exercise or effort. So say, for example, when the element is a mo monostructural, the workout is a single effort and is typically a long, slow distance. Mm -hmm. Gymnastics, the workout is practice of a single skill, and typically the skill is sufficient, sufficiently, sufficiently complex to require great practice and may not yet be suitable for inclusion in a timed workout <laughs> because performance is not yet adequate or efficient for inclusion. And when the modality is weightlifting, the workout is a single lift and typically performed at high weight, low reps. 
It's worth repeating that the focus day is on one, five, and nine, and these single efforts of cardio is a long distance improving high skill, more complex gymnastics movements and single low rep heavy weightlifting basics, respectively. This is not the day to work sprints, pull ups, or high rep clean and jerks. The other days would be more appropriate, which I thought was cool. So it's like, hey, we just have a weightlifting day. Let's do cycles of 20 and broken power snatches, <laughs> five sets. It's like, well, you really I, did I, that in your Mechon. <laughs> well, I, and I play, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have that be the strength. I've, I've played with the strength piece, having the components of like the Metcon, whatever we're doing afterwards. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I really like how it sets up. And other times it's like, ah, you know, it, it didn't allow, even though it was a lot lighter for the barbell cycling stuff. I mean, the intensity was up, but it wasn't heavy. Like we were mm -hmm. you know, heavy on the other things. Uh, on the weightlifting element. Um, but again, like that's, that's one of the beauties of being the programmer. And then also one of the coaches is you can see exactly, it's not just words on paper. I mean, things look great on paper and then you put them in, in out into the real world and it looks very different. Mm -hmm. And the feel was very different. And you're watching everyone, you're like, okay, this is not turn out at all. What I thought <laughs> it was going to look like. <laughs> yeah. Okay, note to self, don't do that kind of, you know, kind of move around a little bit or, or switch this or pull that or whatever. Yeah. So. And one of the part reasons why they were specifically targeting high skills, long, slow distance and small sets, heavy, heavy weight is not because you shouldn't ever go to the track and do repeat 400s or do high volume sets of gymnastics or do, like we said, high volume sets of weightlifting. But it's that the other days took care of that stimulus already. So, you know, if you're doing repeat 400s because you want to improve your mile time, I get it. But if you want to improve your work capacity, like Fran and other sub five minute tests or interval work within that is going to take care of that stimulus that can be achieved without having to do a single modality track day of repeats. That's what it's, it's referring to, right? For the gymnastics side, it's like, we want something really high skill that is, and it even says right here, single element days, recovery is not a limiting factor. So for example, rest is longer and deliberate and the focus is to keep, is kept clearly on the improvement of the element and not on the total metabolic effect. Meaning if you wanna improve your handstand pushups on a single modality day is like take the hour and do a bunch of different drills and skills and practice versus, hey, just knock out 150 of those. <laughs> <laughs> Actually trying to achieve that on some of those days. Only because the other tests, the couplets and the triplets throughout the week, fill in all those other holes that you don't need to repeat on the single modality days. Yeah, and the other thing I think is with this particular um, template, uh, the template and the explanation right here is it's forcing you to think about why am I putting this in? What am I doing here today? I'm not blindly following what the template says. Um, I'm, I need to figure out why I'm doing this and why I have this here. What did I have yesterday? Is it right? Is it appropriate to put this in there? And without, without the caveat of my catch all answers, well, you know, random got to be ready for the known and unknowable. Yeah. You know, unknown and unknowable. That's that, that does not, Yes, that's what we say. Yes, that's what we're trying to achieve. But that is not your catch-all answer to everything, to something that you're not paying attention to. Know why you're putting things down. Yeah. Uh, and it says here, for the two-element days, the structure is typically a couplet of exercise performed alternately. Uh, it has a table here. I'll, I'll scroll up to that in here in just a second. Um, until repeated for three or four, mostly five rounds. You say these days are task priority. Two elements themselves are designed to moderate intensity, right? This is where it's chasing these intensity elements. For the three-part elements, you get those longer tests, right? Um, triplets. You can even do like a chipper with three or three plus. But it's just saying is like these other couplets and triplet days are to round out the intensity that you don't try to pursue on the single modality days. Yeah. Um, it says, let's see, <clears throat> template work structure days, one, five, nine element priority. So single modality, single effort, single skill, single lift, long, slow distance, high skill, heavy recovery, not a limiting factor, two day elements, task priority and three elements don't need to be time priority. This is just 
again, a basic structure of things, couplets repeated three to five times, moderate intensity, um, work to rest intervals, like we just said, is that uh, critical, right? Less movements, lower time, you know, more intensity, more movements, longer time, lower intensity relative to certain things. As we scroll down, uh, workout example. So say we have our day three or three day, run 10K is our monostructural day, long, slow distance, monostructural. We have a gymnastics weightlifting couplet. Oh, these are great, actually. <laughs> I know. I was looking at that. Five handstand push All the except for the body weight stuff that I know you don't like. But I, <laughs> I, I like I do like the setup. And I, I love the fact because this is very old school Santa Cruz CrossFit Greg Glassman, where you do something and they throw the bike in there all the time. Not yeah. not like an air bike or a concept two. It's like you get on your 10 speed. Yeah. Get on your road bike <laughs> or, yeah. or, your, or your five speed from Target. <laughs> Look at this one. Five handstand push ups, five deadlifts at two twenty five. For five rounds, add 20 pounds every round on the deadlift. And these handstand push-ups are strict. And 20 years ago, those things were fucking hard to do. Yeah. yeah. MGW, uh, run 400, 10 pull-ups, and then 15 thrusters at half body weight. And wrap in 20 minutes. Damn. That's good. Day off, gymnastics, single modality, practice handstands for 45 minutes. If you don't think that's going to be hard. Yeah. If, like you think you're not going to get anything out of that. Like, like, yeah. Who would program that now? Like in their gym. I, I didn't, you know, but like, that's that what we're saying. It's like, open up the lab back up and like, let people enjoy that process instead of being like, yeah, you know, I know we're doing handstands again, but uh, you're going to have to do a one-on-one -on -one with me or with a coach to like learn how to kick up to the wall. Or we spent a whole class of working variations of handstands. And it's crazy because, you know, there were these events like the Open and the quarterfinals where it's like, you know, it's just dumb that I, I have to sit here for 12 minutes to try to get a certain. <laughs> like, well, here we're going for 45 minutes to I try to get a certain. minutes and couldn't do shit. I'm like, well, maybe you should sit there for 45 minutes <laughs> once in a while. Maybe we need to, to, maybe we need to up, bump that time up a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, Patrick, and that's what we're talking about is let's just like figure out a way. You know, he says, sadly, you program 45 minutes of handstands in a class and you'll get very fewer zeros signing up. Yeah, but like... But the ones that do... On, well, okay, yes, but I'm, I'm going more as like that's on the affiliate owner to present in a way that people understand of why that's valuable. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So I'm not putting that on what is programmed. I'm putting that on who programmed it and what they're telling their athletes. Uh, no different than, a, hey, we're doing deadlifts today. It's like, well, why does everybody show up for that? Probably because it's easier to do and nobody wants to suck at handstands for 45 minutes. Yep. Uh, the weightlifting monostructural is bench press at 75% body weight plus over oh, 10 reps in row 500 meters, five rounds for time. Hmm. Yeah. And I would say it's like, okay, so that's 185 and 125. Hmm. Seems familiar. <laughs> GWM lunges. Look at this. 100 foot lunges, push press at body weight for 15 reps, row 500 meters for 20 minutes. I mean, this is how simple and great, <laughs> like, dot com classic programming is. Yeah. Trish, I've done that. I've done that work out of the gym. Hey, we're running 10 by 100 meters a day. You know how hard <laughs> that is? Oh, that, was, that hurt so bad after like three. <laughs> uh, okay, rest day, weightlifting, isolated, deadlift, 5, 3, 3, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, 1. Classic. Next day, monostructural gymnastics, run 200 meters, Box jumps to 30 inches for 10 reps for five sets. Dirty. Next one, WMG, clean, 50% body weight for 20 reps. Bike a mile, 15 push-ups for 20 minutes. <laughs> awesome. Like, it's, it's just classic. <laughs> now put some weights to these other than body weight or care, keep the body weight. I don't care. Whatever. 
just to keep the body made out of competition. But like that's that's a, that's a, it, it's so simple. Yet that's all it needs to be. Philip is not Sherwood style; it's CrossFit style. But Sherwood still does it. Yes, because he does CrossFit style. Yeah, <laughs> he does. He does CrossFit style. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, that's the, you know, the couldn't be simpler attitude, which is, yeah, super basic. Like you don't have to like outthink or out uh, get too creative in your everyday training. Like, yeah, this is great. This is great. And yeah, and that's some of the things I do like about linchpin. I said, it's just straight down the middle. Classic stuff. Oh, let's see. Application, discuss, and generate. So <clears throat> let's see. It's like the template and discussion did not generate our workout of the day, but the qualities of one, two, and three element workouts motivated the template's design. Um, our experience in the gym and the feedback from our athletes following the workout of the day has demonstrated that the mix of one, two, and three element workouts are crushing their impact, are crushing in their impact and unrivaled in their bodily response. Right? Like, if we're just working for fitness, it doesn't have to be this, like, crazy, convoluted programming. Uh, scroll down a little bit there. Is typically our most effective workouts, like art, Bill, are remarkable in composition, symmetry, balance, theme, and character. There is a choreography of exertion that draws from a working knowledge of physi physiological response at a well-developed sense of the limits of human performance and the use of effective elements, experimentation, and even luck, our hope is that this model will aid in learning this art. I, That's cool. Perfect. That's just cool. Like everything we have ever talked about on programming on the show just got summed up in one paragraph that I didn't even know existed until we just started reading this. And I'm just taking a pause to soak that in a little bit. Can I read it again? Yes. Okay. Typically our most effective workouts, like art, are remarkable in composition, symmetry, balance, theme, and character. There is a choreography of exertion that draws from a working knowledge of physiological response a well-developed sense of limits of human performance and the use of effective elements, experimentation, and even luck. Our hope is that this model will aid in learning this art. This template encourages new skill development, generate unique stressors, crosses modes, incorporates quality movement, and hits all three metabolic pathways. It does this within a framework of sets, and reps and a cast of exercises that CrossFit has repeatedly tested and proven effective. We contend that this template does a reasonable job of formally expressing many CrossFit objectives and values. <sighs> I'm just gonna like bask in that for a little bit. As a programmer, like why wouldn't you wanna be a programmer to be able to do that? I just. Yeah. It, I mean, it makes it sound like you just get to be part of something so cool because you're the one that gets to have the choreography and the working knowledge and the art and the symmetry and the, man, he, I, I love the way he talked about things. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. But that's it. I mean, that's why we love it because it's an art. It's an expression. Yeah, it was. Glassman was a poet. <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> it's like saying Voldemort around here <laughs> but I mean that's what it is and the best programmers I would say are the most humble in understanding this part that they they haven't found the magic path or magic pill, or perfect way, is that they're constantly a student. They're constantly humbled before the methodology. You can always learn something new, and even if it's something as simple as what it used to be or was based off of. 
and Greg nailed it. I hope you guys practice making workouts. I mean, I, I'm all for all the companies out there that are making everyone, you know, setting up all these templates and setting up gyms and setting up coaches and everyone making all that money out there. Like, I, I think that that's great. There's always a place to make some, some money in, in our space for sure. But as a coach, if you're a personal trainer, if you're a CrossFit coach, if you're an owner, uh, if you're the programmer for the gym, like this is, this is part of the fun of what it is that we design because you get to see what putting the workouts do for people. Mm -hmm. You get to, you get to see, you get to see the fruits of that, of that farming is what, you know, you're, you're, you're growing those seeds for everybody and seeing what you can, what you make out of what works, what doesn't work, what you have to scrap. And out of, to me, it's like that, that is so exciting and so fun to do. Oh yeah. So, um, if, I mean, I always tell people if they want to learn how to program, you just have to jump in and get after it. Yeah. Just play. Cause it's fun. Write some stuff out, try it out. See if it, if you got the right thing out of it or not, if you're like, Oh yeah, it'll feel like this. And you can take it and you do your workout that you just wrote. And you're like, Nope. <laughs> yeah. Nope. I did not get it today. <laughs> yeah. I want to close this out. I, I saw someone post this the other day and it's uh, I think they had another broken science initiative thing this past weekend. Oh, I think so. Yeah. So a uh, person I know, Dale King, actually posted this. He's also a good dude. Let me see if I can start this over. Hey, I like recess, I like PE. But unwittingly, I brought up a lot of what my father had taught me about science. Uh, no voting, let's define terms, let's measure things, let's do experiments. And I brought that mindset to the fitness space and created the fastest growing business in world history, fastest growing chain in world history, 15,000 locations in about seven and a half years. Largely unintentional. Now, here's what happened. I wasn't trying to grow that. I wasn't trying to grow that. But what I did do is I used the methods that I had learned from my father in, in, in terms of what science was and wasn't. And I said, let's do this. Let's define fitness and let's start measuring some things and doing some experiments. And where that ended up was that constantly varied high intensity functional movement increases work capacity across broad time and mobile domains. That was the first kind of fundamental theorem of CrossFit. The success of that notion, the truth of that notion, the power of that notion, created multi-generational wealth for me. So I, the males paid off, I guess. I got, I got more out of my fitness using my father's methods than my dad did in terms of materially, you know, finding financial success and comfort. It paid off. It paid off enormously. And uh, uh, Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Uh, all right. God, I love these. It's so good. You're great. And thank you guys for uh, rolling with us. I mean, shoot. The comment section is lively. Fantastic. Oh, let's see. Sarah. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you suggest for gyms that use CAP, for example, CAP Monday through Friday and experimental weekends? <sighs> great. We used to do that. And, you know, CAP obviously is CrossFit's affiliate programming. I think they do a good job of being classic in nature to CrossFit with all, you know, and how they do things. The thing I like about cap is just the educational material that comes with it for your coaching staff. It's, it's so robust. It's wild. Um, but yeah, do Monday through Friday, like designed and then experimental weekends. And we used to do that all the time. We would play, um, <laughs> like horse, like the basketball game, but we would do it with like handstand walk skills. Hmm. It's like, all right, Everybody walk 15 feet on broken. Cool. Um, now I'm going to put a chalk bucket out there and you have to go around the left and then work around it. You're like, okay, cool. Then the next person would like make up a, like an obstacle course or we would do deficit work or holds. Like that was what the weekends were for. That was like really that experimental stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think is cool. Were they meaning, uh, 
So like, were you have, meaning, experimenting like with uh, your own stuff or taking some of their examples and experimenting on what they laid out? I mean, I mean that's seriously what they just, do. No, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that's... Like, I, do five days and then program your other two on your own. Yeah. So, but, um, yeah, that, that was the fun part of the weekends. It's like, hey, what like weird barbell complex can we do? And then we would play a game of, like, who can get the heaviest. Right. <laughs> have some fun. <laughs> Just have some fun and experiment. And I think the big takeaway here is, like, get back in the lab. You programmers out there, start tinkering again. Yeah. You know, take, take some lessons, what Boz is bringing to the sport, however you feel about the sport side, and then pull that back into the affiliate side. It's like, oh, shit. Yeah, maybe we should, like, get outside the realm of, Rings are only made for this. Boxes are only made for this. Jump rope is only made for this. Pull-up bars are only made for this. No, it's not. And Boss is right. When he's talking about that and how it applies to the lab, he's totally right. Yeah, I totally agree. Right. All right, team. Thank you guys for joining us today on our CrossFit Journal Greg Glassman series, article number 15. What is next on the docket? Ooh. Ah, I like this one. Let me pull this up. God, every time we get a new one, it's like, oh, what could be better than that? <laughs> what a great topic. Seniors and kids. So basically, oh. like masters and kids. Yep. That's going to be cool. I mean, we see this all the time in affiliates. Like, should I have a master's class? Or am I too old for this? Or are they too young for this? Or should I have a kid's program? And it's like, hey, what a great article to bring up and talk about things that you can do inside affiliate when it comes to the old and the young. Or the seasoned and the uh, new. I don't know. What the... <laughs> the seasoned and the baby. <laughs> uh, Trish, yes, that is the, the chipper. Chipper. Um, I'll drop the chipper link if you guys want it here on YouTube. Do we have Q&A? <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> I would love to know more about how to train with my kids. Yes, the journal entry could have been written by Trish and Artemis. <laughs> Uh, Q&A follows along as we're going, Philip. Yeah, it's kind of all, it's yeah. all in the mix. As we're going. So, uh, all right. Happy Thursday, Bill. Yeah, you, you too. Got anything planned this weekend? Um, I have Joe this weekend, so I'll get my daughter and um, we're going to have some fun, like always. Hmm. Finally starting to get nice out here again. Oh, finally, huh? Like, jeez. Oh, because you've had like storms, right? All the rain and all that crap. I'm ready for it to be hot. It's weird because she usually <laughs> is not a fan of the heat and she's over the cold too. Oh, yeah. So it'll be a good weekend. It's been cool here, but like we've had California weather. Really? 50 or 60 in the morning and then like mid 70s in the middle of the day. It's been awesome. Yeah, that it's is been, nice. It's been awesome. And it's always been a little overcast until about 10 a.m. <laughs> great. Yeah, it has been really great. Um, all right. If you guys, uh, before we pop off, if you guys follow us on Patreon, Bill's workout of the week will be up. So you yes. guys get a workout there if you guys follow us on Patreon. If not, go to patreon.com forward slash get with the programming for six bucks a month. You guys get a workout of the week from us as well as discounts on all of our OG gear and things coming up. Um, gosh, I had something I was going to say. I forgot. No. Let's get about next week. Dang it. Oh, our, uh, what is it? Cold beers and cross it bullshit. Oh, yeah. When are we going to do that? I don't know. I, I want to um, do it on a, like a weekend where we have okay. like time and that I don't have to do it at like, if I have to do it at 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. start time. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> still on the West Coast. But uh, we're going to get our old band of buddies together. I can't wait. It's going to be super fun. Larry, Mike, and Brenton. We did a podcast, gosh, that was what, a year or two ago? Uh, our that? drinking buddies, our CrossFit drinking buddies. We're gonna. It'll be like a Saturday mid afternoon show. No plans other than to drink, <laughs> drink and talk, drink stuff. live on YouTube and just bullshit with <laughs> all of you. So we'll let you guys know when that's coming. It'll be a weekend show. If you want to, if you want to join us in the process, uh, maybe we'll do that share a link thing. <laughs> yeah, we should do that. <laughs> Uh, you get a free two minutes with the, with the guys as we get in there. But uh, yeah, nothing planned. We just want to, like we said, drink cold beer and talk bullshit. Uh, Kelly, no. No. 
Uh, no, we'll not no. be drinking that. No. At all. Not anymore. Not anymore. All right, team. Have a great rest of your week. Enjoy the weekend, Bill. Sir. Good to see you. And thank you guys for joining us because it's good to get back to the CrossFit Journal.